This is Matt for Into Boxing. I'm delighted to be joined in Belfast with Michael Conlon, as promised. Return of the mat. I mean, Mick, um, <laughs> you're in Belfast. How are you feeling? Big fight for you. Yeah, mate. Um, happy to see you here. Thank God you had popped to cancel the phone. You were begging, weren't you? I was, de- I was delayed. I was the one the phoned. Hasim and the Hasim Ratman Jr. and says, "This mate, just just pull the plug. <laughs> I mean, I, we need Matt here." Um, well, you got your wish. Yeah. Well, nah, mate, I'm feeling good. I'm relaxed, excited, looking forward to the Saturday. Belfast, obviously, a special place for you. We've obviously seen it in Fieldy Park, where it's rammed. We're going back to the arena. How much of a special place is that? And you know, what kind of memories do you have of that place? Yeah. I fought there. My first kind of homecoming was there. Um, but my main memories of it were watching the likes of Carl Framden, my own brother, go there and, you know, Carl Framden headlining with Soul Light Arena. The atmosphere was, was unbelievable. And, you know, if I look at my last two fights in, 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 in the Falls Park at the Fela and I've, I've seen the atmosphere, imagine that with a roof on. That's what I've been thinking. Yeah. That's going to be crazy. So. I don't know what they expect, but I know I'll be blown away. So I'm just looking forward. I'm just going to enjoy every moment, mate, and uh, and go in there and do the job. Absolutely. Just coming away from the boxing side of it a bit, I've noticed something of a change in you in appearance. You look like you were going on a jungle safari today, doing this open workout. What's this hat about? Talk me through it. It's just my summer hat, mate. No. Come on, this is, you are Mrs. Bart or something. No, no, I love it. I love it. I got it in Liverpool. Um, it lost souls. Um. And I usually just, I'll either wear a cap, if it's summer, and I'll wear a, a beanie hat, if it's winter. So, you know, I just said, let's put a spot on our work, so wear some, you know, fashion or cowboy type hat and, and go for it. So, I'm on. Certainly are. Um, coming back to the fight, has this fight week felt different for you? Because prior to Lee Wood, you're undefeated. Um, many people are expecting you were going in there, you were going to beat Lee Wood, become world champion that night. Does this week, do these evenings waiting for fight night, does it feel any different, any extra pressure, anything else, any other feelings going on in you? To be honest, no. Um, just feels like a normal fight week. Uh, you know, I've learned an awful lot and I'm excited to go in and, and put a performance on, but it doesn't feel any different. It's just it's normal. It's my job. It's what I've done since I was a boy. So, nah, this is my 18th professional outing. You know, 16 wins, one loss. Coming back against the dangerous guy and, and, and began Mariaga. Um, am I worried? No. Am I excited? Very much so. I want to go back and get back to winning ways and, and prove myself, prove to myself that mm-hmm. you know I'm, I'm the same fighter that I thought I was. Talk to me about this opponent, Mariaga. I mean, just looking at his record, it screams that he's packs a punch, 26 knockouts and then 30 wins, and you're coming off a knockout loss. Yeah. Um was this opponent choice completely down to you or do you discuss it with a team? Because I can imagine a lot of teams after suffering a defeat, although you were you were winning the fight, yeah. although you were winning the fight, um, a lot of teams I can't imagine would advise you to go in with someone like this. Yeah, um, it's something that me and my brother and my coach sat down and we spoke about. Um, you know, there was easier tests asked of me. Do you want this guy? Do you want that guy? I says, no, I, I like the Moyaga fight. Um, that's the fight I think I can go back and show what I'm capable of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has ten more knockouts than I have fights. Yeah. So it's it's that's a big uh it's a big saying. So um I have no bother to take this. I'm not worried about my chin, I'm not worried about anything like mm-hmm. that. You know, people could be saying, Oh, I don't think he'll ever be the same other fight, you know. Because of the way the ending happened and I was out of the ring. Yeah. But there was no damage done in that sense. If I was in the middle of the ring, I probably would have went down. I probably could have got up. Um, but the fact that you know, I went out of the ring was the, the scary thing. And I can, I can understand why people would you know, think what they would think. But I'm good. I didn't shift a lot of damage in that fight throughout it. Um, not to the head anyway. Um, so, yeah, um, I think it's the right guy. Uh, I know how good he is, but I know I have a good chance. You know, Lee would hit me, who's known as a big puncher. He hit me clean many times in the fight. Not loads of times, but he hit me a good few times. So, um, never bothered. Never, never was in trouble by the end. So, no doubts in your mind that Michael Conlon turns up Saturday night, does the business, and then 
moves on to even bigger fights and puts yourself right back in that picture with all the names that are being spoken about. 100% the reason to take this fight is, to, is I know it's the fight that prepared me back in the mix. Um, as I said, I could have had an easier fight, but I don't think any other fight right now would have put me in the position that I'll be in after I beat Mariaga. Is this a situation that's... Is it difficult almost not to look past an opponent? I say this from a point of view of everybody sort of... I say expects you to win, but people who know boxing know this is a hard fight. Yeah. But is it difficult to not look at what lies ahead, that sort of bigger fight with either potential rematches or world title fights? Is it is it difficult? I'm going to say no, simply because I know how difficult this fight could be. Um, and I know how much of a stern test they have in front of me. A tough dude in Miguel Moraga. Like the guys haven't even stopped once in his four or five defeats, and it was against Lomachenko. Yeah. And the stoppage wasn't really a stoppage, it was a no mass by the corner. The corner waves it off um, because he was shifting loads, loads of shots. But the guy's tough, so I'm not expecting to win knock this guy out. I know I'm in for a 10 round, a ten round war if, if, if it comes down to it, so I gotta be mm -hmm. mentally prepared and ready for that, which I am. Um, so there's no chance of me looking past this. I know I know how dangerous this guy is in front of me. Mm -hmm. And when you have that you know, that fear of, of, you know, I don't want that to happen again. I'm making sure I don't that doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that makes you perform even better. Um yeah. so you know, that's one thing I'm always kinda of good at I'm always good at spending the moment. You know, early in my career, maybe not so much because I was just expected to be this guy and that guy and this guy. And I knew I would just be the guys who were being put in front of me at the start, but nah, it's different. Nah, I know that every fight is you know, this is yeah. this is a real fight. It's not it's no joke. So I've got to go in there and perform. How do you stay so calm? Because you just mentioned that you do have a big build up coming from your story from when you got robbed of the medal, mm -hmm. from getting the big build up with top rank, from getting walked out with Conor McGregor on your debut St Paddy's Day. You don't get much bigger than that. How do you sort of deal with all the pressure and expectations which are on you? It's tough, and especially early in my professional career, it was very tough. Um, you know, at the start of my career, I was very, very, I, I read the criticism, and I read the, the good stuff as well. And if I read the good stuff, and I, I take that in, it means I'm definitely going to take the bad in. You know, if you take the good, you got to take the bad. So um, I've just stopped kind of reading all that shit, but also I was always trying to, go out and like cause people were saying oh this guy can't punch and, that and I was always trying to like prove people wrong yeah when I don't try it happens you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> so um, I've realised that uh, you know I, I know that now you know with, with maturity and growth as a professional I know that you know I have it up far to hurt anybody yeah. um, and I kind of been showing that um, but also I've just became more relaxed in terms of I know I'm not going to do this forever. I gotta enjoy the journey and enjoy every fight. Where, at the start, I was just like, okay, let's let's get for this. We'll get the next one. The next one comes. Let's just get through and we'll get the next one. Okay, you're gonna be fighting in Belfast. The next one. Okay, let's get for this and we'll get the next one. It was just like that. I I never I never enjoyed at the start of my career. I didn't enjoy the 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 raid as much as what I should have. Mm. I was always just thinking about what's next and getting to that world title and getting there, but. You know, over the last three years, two years, more, or three, the kind of start of the, the lockdown stuff, the 2019, I've just kind of maybe became more mature in, in, in my thought process and, mm -hmm. you know, just making sure that I enjoy every moment. You mentioned, obviously, that it's a journey. Um, How old are you now? Are you 30? 30. 30. Do you look at when the end game is does that ever cross your mind as a professional fighter as in say I know a lot of people find it hard to to give it up and stuff like that but yeah. and I know you've got a lot of big fights left in you I'm not I'm not saying you're you're like 38 and ready to go but do you look at that and think what what is my sort of path now and when you know when would be ideal to hang it up do you do you look yeah, at that sort I, of stuff I think if says they don't they're lying um, you always do um Especially when you've done it for so long. Like I've been boxing since I was seven years of age. It's twenty three years in the game, almost twenty four years in the game. So, um, of course, and I know the kind of where I want to get to still, and what I've still got to do to get there. And yes, there is still some big fights and big things for me to do, and you know, I, I plan to achieve them. But 
you know, I think when the time comes in a few years' time, when I do finally hang them up, I'll have no problem. I'm not really... Mm-hmm. A lot of fighters are attached to the game. Yeah. Where I know that I'm, I'm Michael Conlon the person, not Michael Conlon the boxer. Yeah. No people can... Not much people can separate that, especially when you've been in the game for so long. Mm-hmm. And it is who you're identified by. Is You know, he's the, he's the boxer. I'm a father. I'm a person. And I, I, I know my... My, my, my good sides and my bad sides um, and I know what I'll do after the sport so yeah it's good now we mentioned off camera obviously um, for some reason I wasn't aware that you had kids and stuff like that but you know when you see them and growing up do you look and think I hope to God when you grow up you don't ask to get in this game yeah. because a lot of boxers like I'm doing this so you don't have to mm-hmm. I'm doing this to provide a future but say one day your little girl comes up now and because obviously look at all the fighters that you've got now Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall, and they see all these fans, and she goes, "Look, Dad, Dad I want to, I want to get into boxing. I want to learn to box." You, you forgot, did. You forgot the best star, Katie Taylor. I'm talking about fights that are coming up, and look, and I, I know, don't worry, I don't want to disrespect your Irish yeah, roots. No, no, no. I, I look, do you know? No, I can't. No, Katie Taylor, <laughs> <laughs> you've done me there. Yeah, you fuck. <laughs> no, I'm doing that because Marshall and obviously yeah, Shields are the one, fighters, and they're the ones, they're the ones coming up, and yeah. like it's a huge fight. And obviously, Katie had that, you know, mega fight with yeah. Serrano. So if your little girl sees that and goes, "Look, this is what I want to do," is that going to be a difficult conversation for you? Um, yes, uh, and I think, I think the majority of people who have been in boxing, especially for a long time, uh, and fight, who are fighters don't really want to see their kids do it because we know you know how hard it is um how tolling it is in your body mm-hmm. how dangerous it is for your life and you know how much work it takes to get there where you need to get to, to, to actually earn real money yeah uh, and to you know make a legacy and uh, and do things which are going to matter in, in life and, and and change the, the life of, of your family coming through um I'm a working class kid. Yeah. Boxing was, you know, I had many, many options probably because it came from a good family. But boxing was something I was really good at, and I knew that I was going, I was going to be a boxer one day. And I knew from a young age, mm-hmm. and that's why I kind of focused on doing that. I've done it. Why would I want my kids to? Do it? I've sacrificed everything. I've missed, you know, I've missed. I almost missed the birth of my child. Um, I've missed so many birthdays, I've missed so many weddings, I've missed so many uh, nights and evenings and days and, uh, and milestones in life, like my son walking and things like that. Um, these are things you can never get back, and, and the most valuable thing in life is time. Yeah. And the time I spend away, I spend almost three quarters of a year in training camp. Mm. Like if I do three or four fights, say 12-week 12, 12, 12 camp per, per, per fight, you know, that's thirty six weeks. If it's three fights, you know if it's if it's four fights, it's forty eight weeks out of fifty two. I mean, I get to go home the whole weekend, but even at that, it's not enough. Um, and I know I know it's not forever. That's the thing. I know as no, I know it's not forever. But at the same time, the first four years of a child's life are probably some of the most important. Yeah. And I've missed a lot of my kids' lives, so. Um, and I'll never be able to get that back, mm-hmm. but that's the reasons you know I do this. I don't want my kids to have to do this. Um, yeah. There's much easier ways in life to earn money than getting punched. Yeah. And I suppose if you've created that legacy and you have, you've got Conlon Boxing now, who's promoting, putting on good fights. And by the way, we've not mentioned this undercard is stacked. Mm-hmm. Likes of Paddy Donovan, who I think is probably one of the best prospects in boxing at the minute. Sort of, he sometimes goes under the radar, but then you've got the likes of Tyrone McKenna, Chris Jenkins, and that's that's an absolute bloodbath. Um, your door's knocking. Who is it? Yeah, sorry, just picking that back up. Um, big undercard, Tyrone McKenna, Chris Jenkins, and that's an absolute war. Um, Thomas Carter, how pleased are you with this undercard that's been put together? It's it is a good night of boxing. Yeah, it's fantastic night of boxing. A fantastic uh, fights on it, you know. Paulie McCrory versus Perlban, yeah. that's a knockout. Someone someone's getting knocked out in that fight. Um, Tyrone McKenna versus Chris Jenkins, I think it's you know, one thousand the one on that someone gets cut. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, definitely, there's definitely going to be blood at that fight. Um, and the two I'm most looking forward to is our two young prospects, uh, Kurt Walker and Kieran Malloy. Yeah. You know, their first time fighting in Ireland as professionals. And, you know, I think they're very excited and, and I look forward to seeing the performance they put on. Yeah, I'm hoping to catch up with them boys tomorrow. A lot of talent on this card. Look, I'll be daft if I didn't ask you. So I think it was about a month ago, I interviewed one of your former opponents in Lee Wood. And we were talking about this, as you've got to do. We asked about the rematch. Not even in, in terms of a shot at the belt, but just a rematch because of how good the fight was. Yeah. And I think what he was sort of saying was, if the shoe was on the other foot, do you think he would be offering me the rematch or giving me a rematch? So question to you if what happened happened maybe the fight played out like that and he wanted a rematch would you consider it would you be down for that 100 percent, but it's completely different circumstances mm -hmm. you know he won the lottery that night he won the lottery that night you know, he he pulled it out of the bag when he was behind and the many people not the official cars because they were bullshit of yeah. many people around the world he was made as behind so you know, what if, if he's made his behind and he loses, what's the point of doing it again? You're, you've lost by a lot. Yes, we could do it somewhere in the line, 100%. But when you've just pulled the get out of the jail card and, like, you know, you hit a royal flasher, you're going, fuck me. I mean, of course people are going to go, we need to see it again. I get, I get what he's saying. Listen, he, he has to do what's good for him. Understand what's boxing. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the thing. I would, I'm greedy and I'm going to say, I want the fucking rematch, which I do. But he is, it's a, it's a, a sport that doesn't love you back. It's yeah. a sport that you got to make hay with while the sun shines. And if he needs to go down different routes to do it, he can. Although he would make a ton of money in a rematch, more, way more, we would make way more, both of us would make way more uh, in the rematch than what we made in that one. And we make good money in that one. Um, so it's not, I don't think it's about money. Um, I think that one is, you know, the 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 question which he says try if it was on there to put, it's different, it's completely different. It's a, it's a different type of thing. I understand, why the fuck would I take that very much? I was getting, I was getting my head pucked off me for for the whole you know twelve rounds, yeah. and and I pulled it out. So why am I going to take very much? I've I've won. I've got out of jail, so I understand the thought process. But when you flip the shoe on the other foot, then if I had a one, if I had one of the boys and I won. No, you wouldn't. You 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 wouldn't see very much because there's, there's no. Well, you probably would, but it wouldn't be like immediately much. Yeah. The right guy won. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's in the right guy the one because he 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 pulled the shot out, but uh, in sense that, you know, I was winning on the cards. I was gonna win. Yeah. I won. Simple as that. It wasn't like, actually, I probably would have got a fucking like, Jack uh, Catterall kind of fucking. <laughs> Decision. So I mean, uh, that's, yeah, that, yeah. I can't, I can't even go over that night again. It nah, was a the strange. Judging, the judging, fucking hell, like, it's hard knowing when you're Irish as well. Like having one, oh, one, one don't, judges, one don't one give me that. Don't one give me that. One it's one just one bad across the board the, at the one minute. One of the fucking judges are English, like you know what I mean? What the fuck, like where's the Irish judge? You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it is what it is. But it's boxing, and also an English referee who called a, a fucking a slip and knockdown. You know what I mean? Well, it happens, I suppose. Maybe. Um, lastly for that, it's not Lee Wood. You also got other huge fights. I mean, I know Leo Santa Cruz looks like yeah. he's heading towards fighting, um, fighting Lee Wood. But so what's happened there? I, well, is, is, I heard that there was a purse argument now. I think there's a purse argument because of how little the split is for Lee. I think it's something like 25%, which, I mean, when you think that Leo's been out of... That division for less than what he got, excuse me. Oh, I, I, I don't, probably, but like I said, I don't know his numbers. But I'm looking if he's getting twenty five percent. Well, listen, he got ten times more than what he ever got facing me. So, you know what I mean? If he doesn't, if he doesn't want to fight Leo, the rematches are, and he's going to get more than that again. So, yeah, you know, he would be silly not to. But um, I hope he gets to the Leo fight, and I hope he wins. I really do hope he wins. Do I think he wins? I don't know. I don't think so. I'll lean towards no on that one. Mm -hmm. But if he wins, does he fight me? No, he doesn't. He goes for unification. He goes for Warrington. Ah, he goes for Warrington. And it's understandable. It's a big fight as well. Big, big money. Yeah. So, 
Now, why wouldn't he? Um, does Warrington still hold the title by then, though? I don't fucking know, because that uh, Lewis... What's his name? I know what you mean. Yeah. The, the so mandatory? Yeah. <sighs> he's not a bad fighter, man. But say, Lee, but say obviously, the Lee would fight, Leo Santa Cruz fight happens, you'll get past Mariaga. Um, Warrington gets his mandatory out of the way. I don't know when he has to take that. I think it's back end of this year, November, December time. Mm. You and Warrington? That's, a, that's I, I mean... Island Leeds, wherever the hell you put that, it sells out. That must be something I've spoken to Josh before about it as well, and I'm sure he'd be keen on that fight. Is that something you'd entertain? Oh, That'd be mental. I would love it. I would love it. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Josh Martin. Yeah, I was, was going to say there's no, nah, there's never. Every time I bring you up between each other, there's nah. never any any sort of even slight hint I think of spite. He got annoyed when I was calling him it. Yeah, well, you are annoying. Years. You are annoying. Fair enough. I mean, <laughs> for it gets under people's skin. I don't mean to, but. Yeah. If I'm being me and uh, and I'm just talking and and people get upset about it, so be it. Um, but I don't you know, think he thinks that. To be fair, he did get annoyed at the start. I know either, but uh, like I, I I like him. I like his. I really like his father, Sean. Yeah, quality. Love yeah. him. Man. One of so, these, yeah, and right. a very fucking smart man. People people underestimate his his smartness and uh, and his even his boxing IQ. Um, but it's very deceiving, that's why, because he's a big guy, he talks shit, he's like, oh, you think he's just the guy who's just going to the pub, but he's smart, he knows what he's at. Yeah. Um, so I have a lot of respect for, for, for them and their family. Um, and there would be a fight I would I would love to have, and I would jump at. If someone said to me, you're fighting Josh Warren, I would say, give me your fucking hand and I'll eat it right now, I'll bait it off to take that fight. That's the type of, that's the type of energy I'll bring you at. And... I'm not going to say I'm going to sit and talk shit. I'm not going to talk shit. There's no shit to be talked in that one. That's simple. Like, you know, if he talks shit, I'll talk shit back like I do. Um, <laughs> but if someone said to me, now, you know, we can do one of the other champions next, you can fight uh, Ray Vargas, Navarrete. Yep. No worries. Well, Mick, I'm talking a few time. I know it's fight week. Um, appreciate you giving us this, this access. Well, obviously, you've got a press conference and a weigh-in day still to go. Um, good luck for Saturday night and yeah, we'll catch up after. Good morning, mate. Cheers, mate.